my name is Dan Witz. We're in my studio in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. It's about a month before my show at Jonathan Levine Gallery, which is going to be uh, the past eight or nine years of um, a collection of mosh pit paintings I've done. Mosh pits, human and other ones. I used to be uh, in bands in my 20s, uh, kind of art punk bands, so not all the time, but occasionally there'd be people going crazy in the stage in front of us, and it was just so chaotic and beautiful and frightening and just sort of savagely beautiful that I always wanted to do something with it. I also always wanted to reproduce that feeling of being a musician in my painting, which is uh, something I kind of missed in painting, that kind of intensity, that sort of violence and such. So I wanted to try to make paintings that conveyed that. All my work is about things that paintings can do, that photographs can't do, but they all start from photographs. Every one of these paintings, the dogs, the rats, and the mosh pits would, would have me being in a mosh pit with a camera, usually on a pole, taking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pictures. Same with the rats. I would go out and put out cans of dog food at night and take pictures of rats. Now I put everything in Photoshop and take all these pictures and combine them and arrange them and try to uh, organize the chaos or disorganize the Baroque composition. The photographs turn green and print them on the canvas like an underpainting. And then I paint with layers of glazes, I scumble, I use all the tricks I've learned as a realist painter over the years until I mean, I'm not, not interested in photographs at all. I'm interested in making the painting look totally real, like you know, having this sort of cathartic moment sustained in, in a painting. It's, it's this technique they've been using since the 15th century, these layers of paint until things actually have depth. I mean, the, the light actually goes into the painting, hits the white canvas, bounces back through, and it's sort of like a lens. It gives it light and uh, three-dimensionality. It's, 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 it's actually magic. Artists make the kind of work they want to see. Any painting that is like a believable world, it doesn't have to be realist at all, but it's like a believable world that just takes you inside of it. That's what I, I want to see. So that's what I'm trying to do with these things. Girls with the cell phones. And that's like this very quiet, sustained moment. It's kind of the opposite of the mosh pits. So I, I love that when I swim, it's all dark and someone's looking at their phone and it just seems to be this frozen kind of timeless, sustained moments. Every time I see it in real life, I'm like, that is so beautiful. I want to make artwork that you stop and you really enter. And I have this way of drawing, which is a it's silver point. It's an old master technique. It's a piece of silver wire. It coats the clay-coated paper, and then over the next month or two, it tarnishes. It grounds me and it trains me. You, know, you get souvenirs of my process, but they become artworks in, in their own way. This is a good example of uh, uh, me using digital technology. So it's basically a photograph. It's printed kind of gray and green. And then what I do is I, I almost like an impressionist, will, will scumble these bright colors over it. So I'll put like a, basically a, a mix of violet over a green. And somehow the figure begins to look real, like there's actually blood flowing through its skin. And then I'll put them on. And, the highway by the side of the road where um, bottlenecks happen in, in traffic. So people will be sitting in their cars and they'll drive by and they'll see this, which will look like, you know, at first, like just something that would be by the side of the road, like a vent for some kind of sewer or something. And then they'll see a person and they'll be like, what the fuck? And then they'll have to leave. They'll be gone. Started doing street art in the late 70s and have done it ever since. Making street art is fun. I mean, it is. You just, you, you, it's, it's a type of freedom as an artist that uh, most of us in our studios with our shows and our obligations and our mortgages really don't get. It's actually raised my game incredibly to have all these other people doing it. So around 2000, it turns, you know, from a hobby into, you know, a bona fide art practice. Now I'm, you know, traveling all over the world and I'm doing these very complicated, large, technical, uh, expensive pieces and uh, you know and I really owe it all to these like you know 20 year old kids in art school who are making street art. I have access to all these interesting creative models. They're happy 
and anxious to help, you know, collaborate with me basically on my new pieces. So they'd come over and I'd give them a scenario, like a director, and they, then we would improvise with props and such. These people are very creative and the collaborations were, I mean, you know, their energy really inspired me as much as, you know, anything.